everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great start to your week. Uh, hope that you are off to those destinations and designated places that you have established in your mind you want to be and end up. Understand that it's a process. Understand that it requires that you remain consistent, remain focused, remain committed. It's, it's not how fast you start. It's not how fast you move. Uh, the one thing that you have to understand, this is about finishing. This is about going the distance. It's about refusing to give up, refusing to quit. And remember, as I always say, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Now, uh, before I get started, I do want to remind everybody that right now uh, we're still in the middle of the the One You Love event. And the One You Love event is simply a promotion that I have now to where anyone who purchases any one of the uh, coaching, counseling, or uh, therapy packages that will be listed on the site in the link. You can see the link in the thing uh, in the description box. Anyone who purchases it will be uh, also receive a complimentary package of equal value. So if you get the bronze package, the silver package, the gold package, or the platinum package, whichever one you get, you will be uh, gifted a complimentary package at no charge to give to someone you love and care about, someone you want to see prosper as well, someone that can become an accountability partner, someone uh, that can become an encouraging force as you strive towards newer heights together. Uh, this is going to be for a limited time. Uh, the information is in the description box. If you have problems navigating the site, uh, there's an email in there. Email the support team and they'll take it from there. Uh, like I said, this is for a limited time only, but I just really want to see people close this year out on a positive note. Uh, I don't believe in waiting until the new year to do New Year's resolutions. I believe you close a year strong. I believe that you go into the new year with momentum. And the only way you do that is you start long before the end of the year, uh, preparing yourself, building momentum, taking massive action and making things happen. Now, I want to talk to you about key steps to success the importance of understanding these basic steps now these steps can be broken down into a hundred different components and and uh variables and a bunch of other things that can make them extremely complex i want to really simplify this for you and then you can master each one and understand the depths of it and all the things that go with it but you've got to understand the basic principle behind it all and the uh, first step to uh success is the vision You've got to be able to see something that does not uh, readily exist in the third dimension, something that you can't reach out and touch. You have to be able to see it. You've got to be able to see it with clarity. The more clarity you have, the more powerful of a force you have to manifest and create it. Now, what's that? That means that you've got to be able to step out of the box of the past. Living in the familiar past will get you in a situation where you start to live a predictable future. Why? Because everything in the past has created where you are now. So if you consistently focus on the past, you will consistently repeat the cycle of the behaviors, the thoughts, the ideas, the beliefs, the limitations, and everything else that created your behavior and your actions. You only behave based off of your core held beliefs. So if you believe something is possible or you believe something is impossible, it will have a massive impact on your actions. So first thing you have to do is have a vision, have the vision clear, have it so clear, write it down, put it on a wall, put it in images so that the, because the brain processes images in an unbelievable way and creates emotions off the processing of that image that can really put you in a place of knowing how it feels to have already realized that goal but you have to be able to see it and after you're seeing it then the next step is to believe it you've got to believe it it's not simply seeing something because there's a lot of things you see there's a lot so that's the difference between the vision and the fantasy See, a lot of people can see things and go, man, that would be nice. That's so nice. Oh, man, just look at it. What if what if this happened? That happened and all that. 
but it's fantasy because it's not believed. See, the only difference between vision and fantasy isn't the depth of what you're visualizing. It's the belief. It's, it's the fact of whether you believe it's possible or not. See, fantasizing is simply seeing something grand and not believing it's possible. So it's fantasy. Vision is seeing the same grand thing, but knowing within yourself that it's possible, that it's attainable, that you can do it, that you are not stuck into some uh, figment or idea of who you've always been or who your family's always. It doesn't matter if you came from poverty. It doesn't matter if you're the first person pursuing a degree. It doesn't matter if you're going to be the first person who decides to start your own business. What it matters is in this vision, can you see yourself doing it? Do you believe that if you apply yourself, that it'll happen? We're not asking you if it'll be easy. We're not asking you if there, there won't be pitfalls. What we say is, do you believe that if you apply yourself, do you believe that if you refuse to quit, do you believe that if you follow the plan and don't give in, that you can do it? And once you believe it, that's when things start to happen because you start to behave based off of the belief. It's your core beliefs that dictate your behavior. Your core beliefs dictate your everything you're moving on now is based off of core beliefs you hold. Everything, if you think about everything you do automatically, driven by your subconscious, it's based off of beliefs you hold. So if you want to change behavior, you got to change the beliefs surrounding the thing that uh, encompasses the behavior. You can't sit up and do something consistently, and it's not something you hold as a core belief. Your core belief is going to drive your behavior. It's stronger than willpower. That's why willpower doesn't always work. Self-discipline comes from the core held beliefs and the um, uh, willing to commit to them. But first, all right, you get to the belief part. Now, here's something that you really need to understand about this belief thing. It is not a requirement that anyone else believes in your vision. You don't need anyone to co-sign it. You don't know you need anyone to say, man, that's a pretty good idea. You know why? Because the moment you conceived it in your mind, there was God's evidence that it was possible. And because God has already co-signed it, there's no need for anyone else to do it. What are you saying? What Look, if you believe in God, whatever level you believe in, whatever faith you hold, however you approach God, if you believe that God is a benevolent, that God has good intentions, then you have to believe that God would not create a brain and a mind that was able to conceive things that you could not have because that in its very nature is torture. So then you have to believe that if God allowed you to conceive it in your mind, then God also made it possible. Didn't say I didn't say made it easy. I said made it possible. So then if I can conceive it in my mind, I have already received confirmation from God that it's possible by the very nature of its conception. So once you get to the belief, what's the next step? Take the step. The next step is taking the step. What do you mean? So many people sit up and talk about what they're going to do, and it's always putting it off. Procrastination. That's why one of my most popular classes is breaking the curse of procrastination. Why? Because so many people know what they want. So many people have an idea what they want, but so many people keep putting it off. I'm going to do it then. I'm going to do it when the right time. There's no such thing as the right time. The right time is the moment that you come up with it in your mind, and it, it, it is at that moment that you take action. Why? Because the opportunities are windows, and windows close. So the idea that it's always going to be there, there's this, there's this saying that is very often misapplied. What's for me is for me. Yeah, it's for you in the window of opportunity that it's presented. It's not sitting there eternally and infinitely waiting on you to take action. You have to take action in the moment that it is present. That's what you have to do. You have to take action, not just action. You've got to take massive action. You've got to be fully invested in it. You've got to step out on it like you truly believe it. You've got to move on it like it's really truly a part of the center of your faith. When you don't act on it, opportunities slip away and you become more and more frustrated. And the more frustrated you become, the more you procrastinate because you don't understand the dynamic. It was right there. It was right there for you to take action on it. You didn't take the action. So now what is happening? You're sitting there and you're wondering what's going on. And so now you become more uh, unwilling to take action and more apprehensive and uh, full of trepidation about what needs to be done because you see stuff slipping away. So now there's this understanding that it could be there and then it could be gone. So now it's it's even less sure. You're more unsure 
at that moment. So it's immensely important to understand that. What's next? After that, you've got to focus on what you want. This is huge. Most people focus on what they don't want. And what you don't understand is whatever you focus on, you feel. Whatever you give your attention to has the ability to impact your emotions, your thoughts, your state of mind, everything. And if you're focusing on something negative, if you're creating a negative environment, a negative reality, a negative situation around where you where you are and what's going on in your world. And so you have to be very, very careful about what you focus on. Next, you've got to have a clear understanding of your destiny and are your destination. Where are you headed? What is it you're trying to get to? What's the clear destination? Why is that important? Because when you understand your destiny or your destination, now you can examine your, your and, and calibrate your direction. What direction are you traveling in? So when you know your destination, you can look at your direction and say, well, I'm, I'm traveling in the opposite direction. I'm traveling in a way that I'm never going to get there. I'm going to have to calibrate my direction because direction determines destination. And if I don't change my direction, I'm guaranteed not to hit the desired destination, my destination will end up being somewhere else that I probably am not satisfied with or fulfilled in. And so many people end up in places that they're not happy, they're not satisfied, they're not fulfilled. Why? Because they didn't uh, they didn't have a clear understanding of where their destination was and they didn't pay attention to their direction. Your direction always changes. And the beautiful thing about this, when you understand this, is huge. Why? Because change isn't something that happens immediately. Change is a process. Change is part of an evolutionary process process that takes time. You, in order to move towards something and get to something, it takes time. But here's the one thing you can change immediately. You can change your direction. That's the one thing you can change right now. You can look it up and say, you know, where I'm headed right now is not going to get me where I want to go. I've got to stop. i got to start moving towards that. I've got to start reading books in this area. I've got to start interviewing people, talking to people. I've got to start studying this. I've got to start becoming. Why? Because you don't get what you want. You get what you become. You get who you are. If you're not capable of producing it, you can want it all day, but you won't have it. You've got to become that person. You've got to become who that who, who who it is you desire to be in order to have the things you desire to have. You got to be very careful with your time. You have 86,400 seconds in a day. Each of these days are very valuable. Why? Because they're non-redemptive in the sense that once it's gone, that's one less day you have to spend. So when you spend the day, it's gone. That's one less day to spend. So then what? Spend it wisely. Spend it in a manner that it produces fruit. Spend it in a manner that logs and protects. Well, check it out. This is this is what I mean by this. And I, I need you to pay attention here. I'm going to do this as very it, 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 it's expeditiously and quickly as I possibly can. But I want you to get something understood here. Look, anything you decide to do, there is a positive side and a negative side of the possible realities. Let's just say something real simple. Let's take finances. You're saying, OK, in order for me to reach my financial goal, I need to, let's, let's keep it real simple. I need to save $5 a day. Now, the positive side of that is you save five. Let's talk about the negative side first. You don't save anything or you save one. And when you look at it, you say, okay, I only save $1 a day. No big deal, right? It's only $1. It's $4 off. I'm $4 off. I save $1, I'm $4 off. But see, that's not how it works. See, what if the goal is a year from now, you, you have this plan. And so today you only save $1. Here's the problem. Every time you excuse that behavior, you give yourself permission to do it again. So then what you have to do is ask yourself, okay, if I only save $1 instead of five, where am I at 365 days from now of doing the same thing over and over again? I'm way off my goal. I'm nowhere close to my goal. On the flip side, if I'm supposed to save $5 and I say 10, now I look at that and say, okay, I'm encouraging myself. I'm doing something. I'm striving. I'm looking to always exceed what the minimum goal is. Where am I going to be 365 days from now? Far beyond the original goal I set because I valued each day. Well, what happens when I do nothing? See, that's the thing. Nothing does not equate to neutrality. Nothing does not equate to, well, I didn't do anything, so there's no harm. No, nothing is the equivalent to doing everything wrong. Why? Because you wasted the moment. You didn't put energy and effort into going in the direction you went to. So you lost the time. You cannot get it back. You can never spend it again. You spent it on nothing. You got nothing from it. You gained nothing from it. And now it's gone. 
And so that you cannot have. You've got to be taking action every day. You got to sit up and discipline yourself to take action. You got to move towards the things that you say you want. Discipline. And then attitude. Your state of mind, your mindset, how you move on things, your attitude is huge. I tell people your attitude or your psychology, your thinking, your thought processes are 80 percent of the battle. People talk about having great plans. People talking about having great strategies. People talking about having all the right things in place. I've seen people with some unbelievable plans. I've seen people with unbelievable strategies, but poor attitude, poor psychology, a poor focus, a, a poor way of thinking, and couldn't do anything with it. I've seen people with poor plans, with an unbelievable attitude. It took them longer, but they got there. Why? Because their attitude was simply focused on winning. Their attitude was about positivity. Their attitude was about giving. Their attitude was about being a blessing. Their attitude was about changing lives. Their attitude was about being something bigger than they are in, in, in and of themselves. They saw the bigger picture. And so they were here to be a blessing, to be an impact, to make an impression, to change the world. And they didn't have a great plan, but they had an attitude that says, I will not quit. I will be a positive force in this world. I will be someone that people remembers for doing what I should have been doing. I am writing my legacy piece by piece. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. That's the challenge. Your thinking, thinking, taking your thinking and shaping it to produce it's out of the abundance of the heart, the subconscious, the mouth speaks. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his subconscious, the beliefs you hold. Say, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity bringing every thought. In other words, you got to start arresting the thoughts that are not conducive to the desire. You've got to start arresting the thoughts that are diminishing your energy. You've got to start arresting the thoughts that are suggestive of failure. You've got to start arresting the thoughts that tell you it's impossible. You've got to start arresting the thoughts that remind you of how many people have failed before you. You've got to start arresting the thoughts that don't align with your destiny, that don't align with your purpose, that don't align with your vision. That's why God told him to write it down and make it plain. So those who see it will run. It starts with you, but there are going to be other people that will come in. That will be a part of the vision. The more clear the vision, the more straight the vision, the more you have to. That, there are things I have set up and go, as goals as far back as seven, eight years ago that I'm still working on. But I can open up my wallet and there's a card with it written on it. I can look on my wall right now across the office and there is a board with it written on it. I have it written in every darn gone place you can imagine. And what I can start to look at, the list is getting small. Uh, the older part of the list is getting shorter. Why? Because I'm actually achieving it. I'm actually moving into it. For the people who know what I've went through 10 years ago, you know where I'm at right now. You know how things were. You know how it went from unbelievably awesome to absolutely terrible. And then you, you you probably remember wondering, why is he smiling? Because see, I had the vision. I saw a vision that didn't look like where I was. I saw a vision that wasn't representative of a momentary circumstance. I saw a vision that was representative of what my spirit was telling me. My spirit disagreed with my circumstances. My spirit aligned with my purpose, with my vision, with my destiny. And I started to walk it out. I wasn't in denial. I simply had made up in my mind that this isn't my lot in life. It's not about where I came from. It's not about what I'm going through. It's about where I'm headed. I'm trying to get you to understand 
that you're writing your destiny with your self-talk. You're writing your destiny with what you entertain in your thinking. You're writing your destiny with the people you have around me, around you and the conversations you entertain. Be careful of who you have in your circle. Be careful of your self-talk. Be careful of your thoughts in, 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 that you entertain and the ideas that you entertain. Shape your thinking and your beliefs around your purpose and your destiny. Walk it out. Act on it. Live on it. That's all I have for you today. And as I always say, I, I'm, I, I live every day on full. Why? Because when I leave this place, I plan on dying on E. I don't plan on leaving anything undone, anything left behind. No untapped potential. I'll be able to leave this place knowing I gave this life everything I had. And I will leave a legacy that will speak of me long after I'm gone. That's the greatest legacy you can leave. That's the greatest inheritance you can leave your progeny, your offspring. Is you made your presence felt in this world. Success and all the other things that come with it, the money, the material things is secondary. It comes, but you got to be an impact. You got to touch lives. You got to be a testimony of what's possible. You got to be a living, walking witness of greatness and how it comes and how if you move right, you don't have to chase it. It'll pursue you and overtake you. You've got to be a living witness that blesses other people by the life you live. They can look at you and tell. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get up. Don't forget, uh, the One You Love uh, event is going on right now. If you're really serious about changing uh, your life for the better in any uh, area, uh, any aspect, uh, go find a package that fit, fits you, and you will be gifted an additional package of equal value. The link is in the description box. You will be gifted a package of equal value to give to someone else to bless them so that you both can close out this year on a positive note. And that's my gift to you. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like black men lead which is a rite of passage uh initiative and restoring ghetto for ghetto's forgotten daughters which is a program focused on helping young girls but boys as well suffering from childhood sexual abuse uh rape molestation domestic abuse uh absentee fatherhood and so many other things uh the information will be in the box Thank you.